I'm Misa from Japanese Amo. Konnichiwa! It means hello in Japanese. Today we are going to learn the Japanese characters called hiragana. What I just wrote was hiragana. All the handwriting in this video is mine, and my method of learning hiragana is more unique than the traditional one. I'm going to teach basic vocabulary along the way using the characters as you learn them. By the way, all the stroke orders in this video are correct, but you really don't have to worry about the orders. I think Latin letters also have stroke orders as a guide, but nobody cares how you write as long as the characters look correct. And I want you to actually write on the paper while you watch. So this hiragana is just one of three writing systems in Japanese. There are also systems called katakana and kanji. Here is the example of katakana. Kohi meaning coffee. The Japanese word for coffee sounds quite similar to the word in English, right? It's because the word kohi is a borrowed word from English. There are lots of words like this, and we need to write these foreign originated words in characters called katakana. I'm assuming that you are not Japanese, so your name should be written in katakana too. And there is also kanji. There are lots of kanji that we took from Chinese, but also our own kanji too. A lot of students ask me when to use hiragana and when to use kanji. The answer is not really simple. You need to use kanji when the word is meant to be in kanji. Yeah, I know it's not really an answer at all, but some words would be written fully in kanji. For example, a lot of nouns are written in kanji, but some words are written fully in hiragana. The phrases like hello, thank you, and particles are written in hiragana, but a lot of adjectives are written with a mix of kanji and hiragana, so you just need to learn kanji when learning vocabulary. But for beginners, not just foreigners but Japanese children start off writing all in hiragana because that's all you know. You'll eventually need to learn kanji but for now, it's very important to get the basics of hiragana. And one more thing before starting the hiragana. Hiragana consists of five vowels and combinations made with consonants. For example, ka, ki, ku, each has their own character. Remember, there is no hiragana for just a consonant like k or n or b, unlike English. Okay, so let's get started. This is not. This one should be easy to remember. Just think of a stop sign. It kind of looks like one with the line cutting diagonally through an almost circle, and stop means no. This note is used as a possessive particle, meaning that if you say, for example, A no B, it means A is B. For example, Misa no Neko, which means Misa's cat. It's basically the same thing as apostrophe S in English. Our next hiragana character is Me. Me has the meaning of eyes. Yes, Japanese has plenty of words that consist of just one letter, and you don't have to stretch your imagination too much to see that the character itself looks like an eye. We have moved from no to me because me is the most similar character to no. This makes for an easy transition and logical progression. Once you've mastered the easy stroke of writing no, it isn't too much of a leap to learn how to write me. You just start by drawing a small descending stroke on the left. Then you write the character no, cutting through that stroke. Voila! Easy peasy Japanesey! Next, we are going to progress from me to nu. Can you see that it looks very similar to me? The only difference is that this character ends with a fancy little loop. Some people like drawing characters with loops. These are the type of people who love calligraphy. Other people, however, find this style of writing a real nuisance. And that's one way to remember this character. It's like meh, but it's no sense because you have to add a little loop at the end. The next character we are going to learn is a. In order to draw this character, we just have to add what looks like a bendy cross going through a stroke similar to no. If we combine a and meh, we create the word ame, which means rain. But if you change the intonation like ame, it means candy. If you want a way to remember the dual meaning of ame or ame, just think of your favorite candy raining down from the sky. What delicious carnage that would cause. From a, it is an easy progression to o. 
Try writing these characters next to each other, making the different sounds as you write them, in order to see the difference between them. Once you've nailed the difference between these two characters, we can combine them to create a word. Ao is the Japanese word for blue as a noun, so it means blue color. For more, we are going to progress to su. Be careful, Japanese su sound is very soft. It's not su, but it's su. Often, at the end of the word, you cannot really hear the u sound, and it just sounds like s. As you can see from the drawing, we just need to get rid of a little piece of o, and then grab the bottom of the character and stretch it downwards. Using the hiragana we have learned so far, we can acquire some basic vocabulary. Osu means to push. Osusume means recommendation. To get our next character, we are going to do some more stretching. Boy, these hiragana are flexible. We take the bottom of su and stretch it horizontally to the right in order to get the. We must also remember to add another little bit of this hiragana, just like the one we took from O. We can place the characters su and mu together in order to get sume, which means to live somewhere. Our next hiragana is ko. From this, we can get the word koko, which means here. From ko, we are going to jump to i. We also get the common word i, which means good. If we combine ko and i, we get the word koi, which means cup or love, as in fall in love. If you look at the drawing, you can see an easy way to remember both of these characters and the word. The character ko makes the pond enclosure, while the i are the fish inside it. From i, we can move quite easily to the next character, bi. We can also pick up a new word, risu means squirrel. Fun fact. The most difficult English word for a Japanese person to say is squirrel. It usually comes out sounding something like square. Be careful with the Japanese R sound. It's not quite like the R sound we have in English. It's actually somewhere between an English R sound, L sound, and D sound. The best way to master it is to listen to recordings and try your best to replicate the sound yourself. B, B, Ba, B. Also, be careful not to confuse B as I, as they can look similar. If you do get the two confused, you might end up saying isu or chair when you mean risu or squirrel. Okay, let's compare ko, I, and B. They look similar, so try not to get confused. Next, we are going to use the character we learned for ko and add a vertical line to the left of it in order to create a new character. This character is ni. This is the particle for to or in or at. It also means the number two. We also get a new word niko niko. This means smile. It is an onomatopoeia word which Japanese people are very fond of. The next character is ta. This character is particularly easy to remember because its formation actually looks like the sound's representation in the Roma alphabet. Ta da! Easy. We also get a new word, taiko, which means drums, especially Japanese drums. The next character is ha. When it's used in the word, it should be pronounced ha. However, when it is used as a particle, it is pronounced wa. And this wa particle is called topic marker, which is used to indicate what the topic is in the sentence. So you could translate it as arts for or speaking of. The word ha means tooth or teeth. Ha ha is a formal way of saying mother. It sounds like laugh sound, ha ha, but it is a formal word. And hi is the formal way of saying yes. The next character we have is yo. If you remember ha or wa, this one is easy. All we need to do is remove the vertical line on the left 
ends the fourth left part of the horizontal line. This character kind of looks like a man thumbing for a ride on the side of the road. Imagine a hitchhiker sticking his thumb out and yelling, Yo, give me a ride! We get a few new words with this character. Yo, which means to get drunk or to feel sick in a vehicle, motion sickness. And Ohayo, which is the informal way to say good morning. If you want to say good morning formally, you'd have to add gozaimasu at the end and say Ohayo gozaimasu. And Taiyo, which means the sun. Notice that Y O U, yo, is pronounced like yo, not yo. When the O sound is next to the U sound, it is pronounced like O, the long O sound, yo. The next character is Na. Just imagine a boomerang came and knocked a small part of you away, and you get Na. We have a very important word, Nani, which means what. Now, if a Japanese person says something, but you could not catch what he or she said, you can say Nani, Nani, or you can say E, E, as Ha. In order to transition from Ha to the next character, all we need to do is to add an extra horizontal line above the first one, almost as if we are putting a hat on the character. This creates the character Ho, Ho. The next character that we want to learn is another very easy one. The character is N, N. Now we can create some common and important words. Hon, which means book. Nihon means Japan. This is U. A good way to remember this character is by looking at it and seeing the image of a man who has just been punched in the stomach. You can imagine the sound he makes as he gets punched. Oof! If you get rid of the little bit that looks like the guy's head, we end up with a new character. This character is Tsu. This one is easy to remember because the character itself actually kind of looks like a tsunami wave. If we combine U and Tsu, we get Utsu, which means to shoot and depression. And N, which is the formal version of yes. Hai is formal, N is informal. Next up, if we add a cross to the top of Tsu, we get Chi. Chi means blood. Chi Chi is a formal word for father. From chi, we can move to ra, ra. Remember that the Japanese R sound is not exactly the same as the English R sound. To get to ra from chi, all we have to do is knock the vertical line off of chi so that it is now hovering at the slant. These two characters together form the word chira, which is a kind of furtive glance. From ra, we can move to ro. This character looks a bit like a three. We can remember the sound and the appearance of this character by remembering the popular children's song. Roll, roll, roll your ball gently down the stream. Just like the character looks like a three, we sing roll three times in order to remember how it is pronounced. From ro, we easily get the next character, ru. We can remember this character because it looks like a ruined version of the character before it. We just need to take ro and ruin it a little by curling the end of the character. To get to the next character, we can just take the top part of ru or ro and turn it around to create ku. We can now create the word roku, which means six and kuru, which means to come. Okay, so here is the ro, ru, ku again. Our next character is made by adding two small lines to either side of ro. We now have hu, which is pronounced like a combination of fu and hu, 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 hu. Again, it is worth listening to this sound and attempting to repeat it yourself as it is not common in English. 
we can make some new words, namely ohuro, which means bath. Fuku, which means clothes. Furui, which means old, as in old things. So you can only use it about objects, not people. And huru, which means to shake, to dump someone, and to fall from the sky. So for example, you can say, Ame ga huru. Do you remember ame? It means rain or candy, right? So ame ga huru means it rains or it will rain. Or yuki ga huru, it snows. Or you could even say, Mito boru ga huru. Have you seen the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? So, Mito Boru ga Huru describes what happens in the movie. Our next character is Ke. Do you remember the character Ha? Ke just looks like it without the loop. So without the loop, it's pretty straight, right? And Ke also can mean hair. So just remember it as like a straight hair. We also have new words Kechi, which means stingy. Next time you see a stingy Japanese person, you could say Kechi, or maybe not. And Keitai, which means cell phone. Keitai is actually an abbreviation from Keitai Denwa. Denwa, by the way, means phone. Keitai means to carry. So Keitai Denwa is like portable phone. So it's a cell phone. In English, you can just say, do you have a phone? But in Japanese, we usually say, do you have Keitai? So it's really a common word, Keitai. And often this is written in Katakana, although it's not a foreign word, but because it's an abbreviation, we usually write in katakana, but you could write in kiragana as well. So do you remember when there was o sound and u sound were next to each other? We pronounced like o. This time, e sound and e sound are next to each other, and we pronounced like e, the long e sound. Next up, we have the character Ma. If you remember how to write Ho, this character is an easy one to develop. You just need to get rid of the vertical line on the left and move the top horizontal line downwards a bit. It kind of looks like the mast of a ship, don't you think? With this character, we can get the word man, which means 10,000. You might think that's a number you don't often say, but when you deal in yen on a daily basis, you will need to say it. And we use this man as a suffix, so you'd have to say ichi man if you want to say 10,000 as a number. Ichi means one, so ichi man. And ichi man is about 90 bucks or 80 bucks or something like that. You can remember this meaning by easily imagining a rich man holding 10,000 dollars. For our next character, we just need to take the character N and drag the top portion out to the left a little bit. We also need to add a little line on top. This produces E, E, and E means drawing, painting, or picture, but not as in photographs. And MAE means before or in front. You will also use this as a girl. So if you want to say a year ago, we say ichi nen mae, because ichi nen means one year. The next character we will look at is sa. Do you remember how we write chi? Let's take a look at the word chi sai, which means small. This is a tricky one because it is easy to confuse sa and chi. In fact, when I was a child, I used to write my name Michi instead of Misa because Sa and Chi looked exactly the same to me. It is best to practice writing them both together, making the different sounds as you write each one, just to make sure that you can differentiate the two. From Sa, all we have to do is to add another horizontal line beneath the first one in order to get the next character. The next character is Ki. Ki. It actually looks quite a lot like a key, right? Key means tree. We also get the word sakini, which means beforehand. If you say osakini, 
or osaki ni dozo, it means after you. So you can be a gentleman in Japan. Remember ku? For our next character, we are going to bend ku a little in order to form shi. Shi means the number four and this. Fun fact. A lot of hotels in Japan will not have the number 4 in the left because it is a bad luck due to it also meaning death. From she we are going to add some horizontal lines in order to make mo. And mo is used as a particle meaning also or as well. So if you say misa mo, then it means misa also or misa too. We also get the word kumo which means cloud and spider. And moshi moshi, which is how you say hello when you answer the phone. For our next character, we are going to take shi and bend its tail downwards just a little bit so that it lies flat on the ground. Then we are going to add a horizontal line and then another small vertical line that curls round at the bottom towards the left. This next character is se. Se. Se means height. We also get the new word kuse, which means a bad habit, and kuse, which means stinks in a colloquial, manly way. By the way, the dash at the end of kuse is just a way of showing that the vowel sound preceding it is to be made longer. It is normally used only in katakana or in colloquial writing. The next character is mi. This character is a particularly fun one to draw. Mimi means ears. Miru means to watch, to see, or to look. Omise means shop or store. We could just say mise to mean shop or store, but adding the prefix o makes your speech sound more polite. It's called a honorific prefix. Use it if you wish to speak with honor, young samurai. You can also now write my name Misa. Misa. So if you want to write a letter to me, now you can practice it. Our next character is To. To. This is another simple one. Do you remember to Just add a little line to it in order to make To. This character kind of looks like a To actually. It looks like a To that has unfortunately got a nail or a splinter stuck in it. Ouch. Looks painful. To is also used and between nouns. Remember, you can only use this to between nouns. And it can also mean with a human, with someone. So if you want to say with Misa, you can say Misa to. We can make that word Toshi, which means year and age. With another intonation, like Toshi, it means a big city like New York, Tokyo, London. Next up, manipulating to a little bit, we can arrive at the next character. This character is te, te, and te means hand. In fact, it's actually written on your hand for you to remember. Have a look at your right hand, and you will see a crease in your palm that is shaped just like te. Terrific! Now, if you add what looks like a backwards facing ku on the top of te, we get our next character. This character is so, so. And the crease you just looked at also looks like so, so, so. We also get the new words. We get soto, which means outside, and so, which means that's right. So in English, if somebody is correct or he wanna just say that's right, you just say yeah or yes. But in Japanese, we say so, so, so a lot. They mean that's right, that's right, that's right. So we don't really use the word hai or un to mean yeah or yes in that way. For our next character, all we need to turn is bento a little bit. We need to get rid of the splinter that is stuck in the toe. Thank goodness. And then we can turn the character to the left a little bit and pull it sides down. Now we have he. He, he means fire or day. We also get a common word by combining he and to to make hito, which means person or people. Our next character looks a bit like what would happen if chi and to had a baby. It makes the exact sound as o, 
But when Japanese people write romaji, they write it as wo. But it's never pronounced like wo. It's always o, o. As a particle, o indicates the direct object of a verb. This character kind of looks like a man who has just stepped over the side of a cliff. Imagine him screaming, oh, as he falls over the side. From o, we can move to you, you. There are two ways to write you. I personally prefer the second one, because it's easier for me. We can get the word oyu, which means hot water. That's right, we have different words for just cold water and hot water. So, cold water, we say mizu, but hot water, boiled water, we say oyu. Just remember, oh, you will be in hot water if you forget you. <laughs> Next, we have ya. Yeah. It kind of looks like a man running at someone with his right arm outstretched. Perhaps he's a rugby player and he's about to tackle someone. Imagine him screaming, yeah, as he does it. At least that's what they say in kendo classes. Yeah. And ya yeah means arrow. From ya, yeah, we can get ka. If we pull ya yeah and tilt it to the side and straighten the part that is curled. Ka means mosquito, and part of this character looks like a little bit like a pesky mosquito. Look at those creepy legs as it flies about. It can also be used as a particle meaning or. We get a few new words too. We can make kau, kau, which means to buy. And yaka, which means kettle. Our next character is he, he. But as a particle, it should be pronounced as e, e. Do you remember the wa particle? It's usually pronounced as ha in words, but as a particle, it's pronounced as wa, right? This is the same. If you use this e as a particle, it means to, like towards, but it's a very formal way to say to. So we normally use the particle ni to mean to somewhere. We also get a new word with heya which means room. Imagine someone who always greets everyone by saying hey ya when they walk into a room. Okay, we are almost done, don't worry. Our next character is wa, wa, wa means circle. So for example, if you say yubi wa, it means a ring, because yubi means a finger. You can remember this character because just like ka looks like mosquito, wa looks like a wasp. We also get the word Wakaru, which means to understand. How are you doing? Do you understand everything so far? Wakaru? From wa, we can move to ne, ne. We can move to this character just by curling the end of wa a little bit. Ne even looks a bit like a fisherman casting his net out in the hopes of catching some dinner. Ne means root. But if you see ne at the end of a sentence, it means isn't it? So, if you say kawaii ne, it means it's cute, isn't it? Or it's cute, don't you agree? We also get the word neru, which means to sleep. To make our next word, we will take wa, and instead of curving it round at the end like we did to get ne, we are going to flick out to the right and give the character a little tail. This character is re, re. Re means example. Okay, we are almost 85% done. In fact, you won't have to learn any more new letters, and we can create new sounds with the existing hiragana by adding some marks. Take a look at this for example. This is ka, but if you add the mark, it becomes ga. We now have a new word, gaka, which means painter. This mark is formally called dakuten, but most Japanese people normally call it ten ten, which literally mean dots. You can put these ten ten to any K, S, T, H sounds. K would be ga gi gu ge go sound. S would be za ji zu ze zo sound. T would be da ji zu de do sound. H would be ba bi bu be bo sound. Next, if you add the ten ten to ki, we get gi, gi, and the new word is. Ginko, which means bunk. Next, this is ku, right? Maybe you can guess what the sound ku and the ten ten would make. 
it's good. Good. The new word is oyogu, which means to swim. Next, this is ke. So if you add ten ten, it becomes ge ge. And we have this new word genki, genki, which means energetic or healthy or doing well. In Japanese, we don't ask how are you. We ask genki, which literally means are you doing well or are you healthy. So if your Japanese friend asks you genki, you can say um genki. Yeah. I'm good. So notice that we don't use the word e, which means good. You'd have to use this word genki to describe that you are doing well. Next, this is ko. So with ten ten, it makes the sound go, go. Do you remember how we say Japan? It's Nihon, right? And if we add this ko, it becomes Japanese language Nihon go. This ko is used as a suffix for languages. So if you want to say French language, we say France go. Next, this is sa. So with ten ten, it makes the sound za za. And now we have this common word zanen, zanen, which literally means shame, and it means like it's a shame, but you'd use it like too bad. So if you invite someone to the party and the person can't come, then you'd say zanen. Next, we have shi. So you can guess what the sound ten ten would make, ji, ji. And now we have another common word, jikan, jikan, which means time. Next, this is su. So we have zu, zu. Another common word, cheese, which means map. Be careful. If you say cheese, it means cheese, but this is cheese. Map. Next, do you remember this se? With the ten ten, it makes the sound ze ze. So se becomes ze. And our new word is zenbu zenbu. We actually haven't done this bu sound. This is from the character hu becoming bu. Zenbu means everything. Next, this is so so. So the ten ten makes the sound zo zo. And our new word is zo, zo, which means elephant and statue. Next, we have ta, ta. Do you remember this ta? It was easy to remember, right? Because it looks like the Latin alphabet T. So with ten ten, it makes the sound da, da. And our new word is karada, karada, which means body. Next, this is chi, chi, and with ten ten, it makes the sound ji, ji. Do you remember the other ji, chi with ten ten? They have the exact same pronunciation. The bottom line is that there aren't many words that use this chi plus ten ten, so you can use the other ji most of the time when you hear the ji sound. The rule is that we use this chi plus ten ten when the word was made by two different words with kun yomi or Japanese reading. So our new word hanaji, which means nose bleed, is made of two words hana, which means nose, and chi, which means blood. Hanaji. We also use this chi plus ten ten when the ji follows the sound chi. For example, there is a word chijimu, which means to shrink. Because of the chi. G is written with G plus ten ten. I'm not expecting you to memorize all that, so just relax and stick to G plus ten ten most of the time. Next, we have two becoming Z. So this is the same story as G. Normally, we use the other Z, Z plus ten ten. An example of a word that uses this Z is Zuzuku, which means to last or to continue. Because of two, the two sound has to be written with two plus ten ten. Next, this is te. Do you remember it's written on your right hand? And with ten ten, te becomes de. De. Our new word is deguchi. Deguchi. So this gu is from ku, right? Ku with ten ten is gu. So deguchi, which means exit. Next, this is to. And if we add ten ten. We get the sound do do. Our new word is doko doko, which means where. Next, this is ha. 
with ten ten. It is ba ba. We get our favorite word baka, which means stupid or idiot. If you watch lots of anime, you've probably heard of this word baka. Now you know how to write it. Next, this is he. Do you remember it means fire or day? But with ten ten, it becomes bi bi. And our new word is kubi, which means neck. But in slang term, it can mean to get fired. Next, this is hu hu. Do you remember it is not exactly f u sound, rather it is h u sound hu. And with ten ten, it becomes bu bu. Our new word is asobu, which means to hang out or to play, as in the kids play in the park. Next, this is he or e if it's used as particle. Too. And with ten ten, it becomes be be. Our new word is kabe kabe, which means wall. Next, this is ho, and with ten ten, it's bo bo. Our new word is boshi, which means hat or cap. Okay, we are done with ten ten now. Now let's take a look at the small ya yu yo. These babies are used in combination with characters that have consonants ending in e sound, namely shi, ji, ni, he, mi, and ri. Let's have a look at this shi with small ya. It makes the sound sha, sha, and we have the new word kaisha, which means company. So shi plus small ya make the sound sha. If we combine shi and the small u. It makes the sound sh sh. So our new word is shumi shumi, which means hobby. Next, she with small yo make the sound sho sho. Do you know how to say soy sauce? We say sho you sho you. Next, she with small ya. Maybe you can guess the sound. It's cha cha. So our new word is ocha. Ocha, which means tea. Normally, when Japanese people say ocha, it refers to green tea, although it can mean black tea. Next, chip with small u make the sound chu chu. Chu sounds very cute to us, and chu is the sound of kissing, and also is the sound of mice. So our favorite character Pikachu, his name comes from this chu sound. Because he is an electric mouse, we get the new word "chugoku," which means China. Most countries sound like English word, like Italy would be Italia, but China and Korea, we say "chugoku" and "kankoku." Next, "chi" plus small "yo" is "cho cho." If you watch anime, you've probably heard of the word "chotto," which means a little bit. If you say "chotto matte," it means wait a bit. Wait a sec, and this chotto doesn't just mean a little bit, but is often used as, um, sorry, but Japanese people don't like to say no because it's too direct. So we instead often say chotto to let the listener figure out that it's a no. Next, ni plus small ya is nya nya. You must know the cat nyan cat, and nya is how we say meow. Again, if you watch a lot of anime, you've probably have heard girls going "nya nya" to mean "meow meow." Next, "ni" plus small "u" is "nu nu." It's used in the word "gu nu," which means milk. "Gu nu." Next, "ni" plus small "yo" is "nyo nyo." There is no common word that uses "nyo." Next, we have "he." Plus small ya, it makes a sound ya ya. We can create the new word hyaku, which means hundred. Do you remember? Mum means ten thousand. Now hyaku means hundred. Next, he plus small u makes a sound hu hu. Again, there is no common word that uses hu, but hu hu is the sound of wind. Next, he plus small yo is hyo hyo. And the new word is hyo, which means boat or list. Next, we have mi plus ya, which makes the sound mia mia. 
Again, there is no common word that uses mia, and it's the same for mi plus mo ya yu yo sound. This is mu, mu. Again, I can't think of any words other than mu, which is the name of the Pokemon. And this is mio, mio. Next, we have ri plus small ya. It's ria, ria. If you say ryaku, it means abbreviation. So, McDonald's, we usually call it mac, mac. So, it is ryaku, abbreviation. Next, ri plus small u is ryu, ryu. Our new word is ryu, which means dragon. We also use the English word dragon. I think Asian dragons and European dragons look kind of different. And when we see the Asian looking dragon, we say ryu. But when we say European looking dragon, we say dragon. Next, we have ri plus small yo. It makes the sound ryo, ryo, ryo. It is a bit difficult to pronounce, but ryo, ryo, ryo. Again, Japanese R sound is closer to the sound D. So if you can't pronounce ryo, you can just say ryo, 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 which is like D Y O. Ryo. It sounds pretty much the same to me. Ryo and ryo. And our new word is ryori, which means cooking or cuisine. So if you say Nihon ryori, it means Japanese cuisine, Japanese food. And if you say Italia ryori, it means Italian food. Japanese people love small cute stuff and ya, you, yo aren't enough for us. There is another baby character, small tsu. This signifies a glottal stop or small pause from closing the airway at the back of the throat. When you see this mark, it is telling you to leave a small gap between the characters on either side of it. A less confusing way to think of what this represents is to see it as kind of a double consonant sound. So for example, this ma and small tsu and te makes the sound ma te, ma te. Without the small tsu, it would sound like ma te, ma te. So can you see the difference? Without tsu, ma te. With small tsu, ma te. You have to put a pause in between. Matte. Matte. It means wait as a request. Another example is ikkai. Ikkai. It means once, one time. So if you want to say one more time, you can say mo ikkai. Mo ikkai. Another example is yatta. Yatta, which means yay. I chose this because now we have finished. At last, I will show you how to write konnichiwa, hello, and thank you in hiragana. This is konnichiwa, konnichiwa. And thank you is arigato, arigato. That's to and u at the end, but because of o u sound, we pronounce like long o sound. So, arigato, arigato. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I'll be honest with you, it took a lot of effort and time. I would appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to improve your Japanese. See you later. Matane!